Okay, a couple topics, a very short lecture about fair hiring. And, uh, you know, fair hiring is all about uh, being in conformity with the EEOC regulations, uh, the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission's regulations. The EEOC is the federal agency that polices uh, fair employment practices and fair employment laws. And you need to be in conformity with uh, EEOC regulations regarding all employment decisions. Those are decisions about hiring, firing, promotions, raises, demotions, whatever you do on the job. And uh, basically, uh, these say that you cannot discriminate against people uh, based on their protected classes. And that comes from Title uh, seven of the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which is, was amended in 1991, where you uh, are not allowed to discriminate on the basis of these protected classes. And so the federally protected classes and groups, and remember these are federally protected classes. An employer cannot discriminate uh, based on sex, race, national origin, religion, age but only for people over 40, disability or status as a Vietnam veteran. Uh, so let me just make clear what I'm talking about here. Uh, so many states, most of the states in the United States have what we call at-will employment laws which basically mean that you can uh, be fired for any reason uh, your employer wants. And what that means is the employer can fire you for whatever reason they want. And so they don't like your face, they can fire you for that. Uh, they don't like the fact that you uh, had a, uh, you went to a liberal arts college like York, they can, when they find out about that, they could fire you for it. They say that they don't want people working for them, uh, you know, who are not technically trained and that's perfectly fine. Uh, they can fire you for good reasons, they can fire you for stupid reasons, they can fire you for crazy reasons. However, based on EEOC law, there are several reasons they cannot fire you on. Your status as a member of one of those protected classes are the things that they cannot fire you or hire you or discriminate uh, against you upon. So if, for example, uh, some employer comes in one day and looks at you and says, I don't like the way you look, I don't like your face, you're ugly, get out of here, you're fired, that is pretty much a legal uh, reason to fire somebody. However, if they come in and they say, I really don't like the fact that I have a woman out here uh, and people are interacting with a woman as the first face they see in my company, you're fired. That has just been a violation of uh, EEOC law. The person was discriminated against based on their sex, and so therefore that was a violation. So the federally protected, and let me get a pointer here so I can point. Where's my pointers? Laser pointer. Okay, so sex, you know, male versus female, race, uh, uh, national origin, religion, age above uh, 40, disability, and status as a Vietnam veteran. These are all federally protected. So uh, anywhere in the United States, you're not allowed to discriminate against anybody on these, uh, you know, uh, you know uh, statuses. What's not protected is sexual orientation and physical attractiveness, as I've just given in an example. That is, in terms of federally protected groups, uh, sexual orientation is not a federal protection. Uh, so, for example, uh, one company, a restaurant company that has a, uh, a family down-home country vibe to it, uh, about 25 years ago they said that our, you know, restaurants uh, atmosphere of being country and down home doesn't really work that well uh, with having gay employees. And so they announced that they wanted all their restaurants to fire all their gay employees. And that was perfectly legal because being gay is not a federally protected group. And so uh, what happened was 
uh, you know, they don't have a list of who's gay and who's straight. So what happened was they went and they fired people based on whether or not they uh, thought they were gay or not. So they, of course, fired some straight people who they thought were gay. And believe it or not, that was a legal firing. Because since sexual orientation is not protected, and you know, thinking somebody is gay or straight is not a protected class, that is a perfectly legal reason to fire somebody. Now, here in New York City, you cannot fire people, you cannot discriminate uh, against people on the job for uh, sexual orientation or gender identity. Uh, as you can see here in this recent chart of different laws in the United States, uh, different states have enacted different laws to fill the gap uh, left by the federal government. Uh, so, for example, uh, Nebraska here, oops, sorry, Nebraska here, yeah, Nebraska, Nebraska there, uh, sexual orientation and gender discrimination not prohibited in public and private law. Uh, via statute, executive order, and or case law. Uh, I don't know, I think that means that they're not, uh, you know, they have no laws. That is this group here in the center of the gray area. Uh, and you can see different states have different levels. Uh, some have protections against gender identity, uh, but some don't have protections against sexual orientation. Uh, so it really comes down to the different states. Uh, under uh, President Obama, and uh, uh, when he was president, he was in charge of the EEOC, and he made uh, his EEOC made the ruling that sexual orientation was discriminating against somebody based on their uh, sex, uh, going back to the 64 Title VII law. That is, that uh, they made the legal argument that if you are a male and you're going to sign up your partner on your company's insurance forms and you put down that your partner is a male and you're fired because of that, because you're gay, you're actually being fired because of the gender of your partner. So that is, you know, goes back to the 64 Original Civil Rights Act. Uh, and of course with uh, the current president that's going to be different and in fact a Supreme Court case is currently going on that will decide whether or not uh, that will be the case in the future. And just a couple other things to wrap up. Uh, an executive order was made which I think uh, President Trump reversed. Uh, you know, uh, you know, telling government government contractors that they could not, uh, you know, uh, violate EEOC protected classes in their hiring. Uh, the Equal Pay Act of 1963 dictated equal pay for uh, uh, men and women on the job. Age discrimination protected older Americans on the job. Uh, the American uh, with Disability Act of 1990 protected disabled, uh, you know, uh, Americans on the job. The law says that you know companies need to make reasonable accommodations in uh, meeting the needs of a disabled uh, you know employee. And that is pretty uh, dicey. A lot of the cases end up in the court. But for example, uh, common examples are an employee who is pregnant or an employee who uh, is uh, physically disabled uh, and a cashier and they can't stand for long periods of time, it is a reasonable accommodation to give them a stool. Uh, likewise, providing braille instructions for uh, a uh, call center worker uh, would be reasonable accommodations. But some uh, companies uh, will often say that any accommodations are unreasonable and they will fire workers for being disabled uh, rather than making uh, reasonable accommodations. So just to go back, again, these are the protected classes. And in general, we can't really know anything about them when we're making employment decisions. And it often comes down to the idea of, in a job interview, uh, you're not allowed to ask anything about any of the protected uh, you know, class statuses. Uh, so uh, one. Uh, 
thing that I think I left off the list is family status. And so uh, you can't really ask people questions such as, uh, well, do you have any quick kids or do you, are you going to be uh, bringing a family uh, along with you when we hire you? Uh, because those would give information about you know your protected status. Likewise, uh, you know you're unable to ask questions about how old someone is, and other questions have to be very carefully asked. Uh, and you know in the field today, it is amazing the lengths that they go to uh, to protect. Uh, companies will protect themselves. Uh, from charges of uh, unfair hiring and job interview situations by keeping the interviewers and the uh, employment uh, you know decision making people unaware of things uh, such as national origin, religion, age, uh, you know disability status. Uh, here at York, uh, when we do a hiring, uh, we're not allowed to really know about the person's race. We're not allowed to know about their national origin. Uh, you know, to the extent that uh, you know the EEOC <coughs> officer, one of them here at York, actually said that you should not even list your uh, you know address uh, on your uh, application materials anymore. It's much more convenient and safe to list a email address because a you know blah 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 at gmail.com that doesn't tell you anything about anybody but if they have an address that's in uh, you know uh, you know uh, you know lower Brooklyn or if they have an address uh, that's in upper Manhattan that could tell you something about the race or national origin of the person and so in you know companies are doing very a lot to really protect themselves uh, from charges that they knew about this and made decisions based on this all right thank you bye bye